we're talking about an element. An element has one type of atom. And let's take out our periodic table. And I'll, so all of the elements on the periodic table exist as one atom at a time, except for seven of them. And I'll tell you which ones, but let's go ahead and write that down. All elements exist as single atoms. except seven. And those are the diatomic elements. And they actually form the shape of a seven on the periodic table, sort of. So they're gonna be nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. So a nice shape of a seven, except for the last one is hydrogen way over here. So hydrogen, NOF down to here. Let me write all those out. And I'm going to write their phases too, but you don't have to know those quite yet. Hydrogen, uh, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine. Sorry, I had to visualize my periodic table there. Uh, bromine, oh, sorry, chlorine, bromine. And bromine's a liquid, and iodine is a solid. So I've made them in sort of their shape of their seven. And these are going to be important. So when these seven elements appear in chemical reactions, they will appear diatomic. There will be times when we refer to oxygen as just O, but not in chemical reactions. And oxygen gas that we breathe, Today's demonstration, breathing in oxygen, um, is O2. Now, um, so all other elements, for example, sodium, which is Na, would just be Na. And it turns out at room temperature, it's a solid. Nitrogen would be N2, zinc which is also a solid, would just be written by itself. And all of the other elements, except for these seven, are what are called monatomic. So I'm gonna write that up here. So single atom elements are mono, monatomic elements, which mono means one, atomic means atom, they are the one atom elements all of them except these, and these seven are the diatomics. And it gets, as always, slightly more complicated than that, but that's what you have to know now. Compounds. Compounds are going to be um, more than one type of atom. bonded together. And we won't talk about, well, we will actually talk about, there are two type of bonds. There are ionic bonds, and there are covalent bonds. Covalent, that's an O. Let's just start over. Covalent. And again, we're not quite there yet, but I do want to draw the distinction as you sort of fill in your knowledge and we move forward, you'll be able to use these notes even better later on. Ionic bonds are going to be compounds like table salt, NaCl, and K2SO4, just as two examples. Covalent bonds, some of the examples we've seen we talked about CH4, methane or natural gas. We talked about 
sucrose, C12H22O11, and uh, just for one we haven't talked about, uh, NO2 is uh, one of the car exhaust fumes that comes out. Um, and we'll talk more about these, but these are examples of compounds, and these are going to be called ionic compounds. And we'll talk about what that means later on. And these are going to be covalent compounds. Two types of compounds, broadly speaking. Both of them have more than one type of element, of atom, more than one element. Let's see, more than one type of atom bonded together, more than one element in the formula. That's another way of saying it. And so we get to matter. Remember, we started off by talking about matter. Matter is anything that uh, has mass and takes up space. Can it be separated by physical process? If the answer is yes, then it's what's called a mixture because it has more than one type of substance. If the answer is no, then it's going to be a pure substance. Um, and some so separated or separations are one type of physical process. Um, there are other physical processes which are not separations. And in fact, we have a separations lab. That's how interested we are in separations. And once you have it broken down into pure substances, can it be decomposed by a chemical process, a chemical change or a chemical reaction? And if the answer is yes, then it's a compound. And if the answer is no, then it's an element. Because it's only got one type of atom, there's nothing to chemically break down through a chemical reaction. Over here, is it uniform throughout? Here we get yes for homogeneous and no for heterogeneous. And so we can sort of classify matter according to these simple terms. And examples from what we've talked about would be a uh, copper penny. And again, to be 100% copper, it's got to be pre-1982. So an old penny, younger than me, for most many, but uh, older than some of you, perhaps. Compounds, uh, examples, sodium chloride, more than one type of atom, can be broken down through a chemical reaction to make sodium and chlorine by themselves. Homogeneous, oh, another example, H2O, can be broken down. We saw a chemical reaction for that. Homogeneous substances, we saw uh, sugar water, salt water, um, and heterogeneous, well, in addition to cookies and cream and Rocky Road and many ice cream flavors, we have fizzy soda.